With physical shops being asked to close during circuit breaker, a lot of retailers had to quickly find solutions to sustain their businesses by going online. A lot of experts tell us that beyond this pandemic, these habits of online shopping are set to continue. We've had businesses who've implemented those initiatives, but unfortunately because of COVID-19, some of them have had to put a pause on these BYO discounts or initiatives. There are also some who switch to disposable cutlery or plates for dining services because of the perception that it's cleaner and safer. We've got a community of people who were really bought into the idea of BYO, but you can't. In fact, a lot of places are just freaked out at the idea of taking a container from what could be a very germy customer. So people feel quite a lot of heart pain about the fact that even if they want to, with the best of intentions, they can't avoid a massive consumption of plastic now. Take an example of a plastic cup where you tap out your kopi thing from the hawker centre. The average working life of that plastic cup is probably only about 13-15 minutes. But potentially, you know, if it ends up in nature, that remains in our oceans for up to 400 years. Something that's not been talked about so often is that impacts from the production of virgin fossil fuel based plastics. So for those that are not familiar, that's actually from the petrochemical industry, so the oil and gas. Production of plastics consumes as much oil as the global aviation sector and therefore also contributes quite a fair amount of greenhouse gas emissions and to climate change. Recycling is a business. It only gets recycled if there's market demand. And right now, there's virtually no market demand. And nothing in Singapore is biodegradable. We incinerate all of our waste. A lot of plastics that they say are biodegradable are actually only biodegradable in industrial facilities. They have to be at such a high temperature to break down that you're never going to have it in a backyard setting. And Singapore just does not have that kind of facility plans to launch a deposit refund scheme in Singapore. Some of you might have participated in the reverse vending machines where you could return your bottles and cans. You might have received a voucher as an incentive. Upcoming extended producer responsibility policy in 2025. And basically what this policy will do is really put the responsibility of the packaging on the producers who are bringing in packaging into Singapore. It's still very important to put pressures on the industry and governments to put investments into the recycling industry. A circular economy will only be as good as our recycling system. The packaging that we're putting out in markets, how do we redesign it to make it optimum for recycling? How do we start investing in adequate recycling facilities to ensure that the packaging that we're now putting out is able to be recycled in our waste management system? The best countries in the world have the best technology for sorting at the material recovery facilities. We don't. It's almost manual. Singapore is all about the future, right? It's all about technology. Are we using the best technology for recycling? Let's have the statistics. Knowing those recycling rates will help us to be better consumers because we'll know which materials can be recycled. I ask myself when I receive a piece of packaging, what goes into the production of this item? Where will it end up after I toss it? What are some of the things that goes behind the production of this after I've used it for like 15 or 20 minutes? Thinking beyond how that packaging benefits you, looking at the true cost of that packaging will really help you to start consider how that affects the environment around you. Some places actually offer the ability to take the delivery bags back or containers back. And so, what you do is you vote with your dollar. You shift your consumption to those places that are providing that. But it is quite important for you to voice your concern, provide feedback if you're not happy with the service that they're providing, and they will listen and take change. There is no silver bullet, no solution that can be implemented immediately. What's important is to stay optimistic. Trust in the amazing capacity of Singaporeans to use their problem-solving skills to come up with ideas. We need to act ambitiously and we need all stakeholders involved in this to take action.